All right, uh, thanks for joining me again. Um, another topic I wanna go over today is giving yourself permission to heal. Because th this gets forgotten, this gets forgotten. Uh, this is, okay, so one of the first steps in figuring yourself out is to forgive yourself for doing shit you did when you didn't know any better. And a lot of people say this, but have you really done it? Have you? <laughs> like, you know, have you really, truly forgiven yourself? Because people, especially like, you know, spirituality gurus or whatever, and this gets on my damn nerves so bad. We've got so many people in the spiritual world, in the spiritual circles, who are telling us, oh, well, you got to forgive that person because that's the high-minded thing to do. You want to be enlightened, don't you? You know, and I, I disagree with that. I think that's horse shit. And I don't think you should have to do that. If, you, if you're not ready, the forgiveness of another person, if you have to do it at all, if you should even have to do it at all, that comes at a certain time and that's whenever the fuck you're ready. And that's it. You cannot force forgiveness. That'd be like forcing yourself to like a food you don't really like. Like, why? So, what I want you to understand is that forgiving yourself for screwing up and for not knowing any better. I want you to look at it like you're forgiven a child. Because number one, when you do things, especially things that uh, seem hurtful to yourself, that is your inner child doing its best to try to protect yourself and, and to try to protect you from something. And um, like people will do things, you know, that, that seem, that, that are uh, like it's outwardly seem hurtful to them, like do drugs or whatever. and. But if you ask them why the no, and especially like, have you ever seen this show called Intervention? It drives me nuts because those people on the show will talk about what the childhoods were like and what they're miserable about. They will sit there in front of the camera and say it. Like it's not a mystery. And then the damn parents, you know, and the, re and the siblings or whatever will be sitting there uh, talking about, oh, we don't know what's wrong with her. She's just been doing meth for so long. She used to be so beautiful. I don't know what happened, blah, blah. Now she's just like a wreck. And... Uh, you know, the kids get taken away and everything else and all this kind of shit. And, like, no one asks that person, okay, so why are you hurting? I know you've told me, but, like, you know, can you give me more detail? Why are you They don't, they'll say, well, why are you doing drugs? Why are you doing drugs? But, hell, they need to ask them, why are you hurting? What's hurting in you? You know, where's the pain point? And then if you, just like any other human being on the planet who can talk and communicate, if you ask them the right questions, they'll tell you and they'll explain themselves to you. You know, and you can, you can ask the right questions and help them get insight into themselves. And then, so what they're doing, so they, the, when they do drugs, it's to, it's to protect them from feeling the pain that they're feeling from whatever went wrong for them. So even though doing drugs is bad for you, they're doing it in a, in a self-protective measure. So the self-sabotage thing is kind of like an illusion in a way. Because somebody who's uh, quote-unquote sabotaged themselves has a, has a reason for doing that. And it's to avoid a deeper pain. It's the same reason people drink, you know, when they're sad. Or, or you know, when they're upset. It's, it's to calm down and to not deal with that emotion and not have to deal with whatever's making them feel bad to start with. And, you know, drinking every day isn't necessarily good for you. you know, beer won't hurt you, but, you know, you can't be sitting down to, like, a bottle of vodka every night. <laughs> um, you know, so that's that's hurting you. It's hurting your liver, but um, among other things. But they're doing that in order to, to escape or hide from a, a pain that they have deemed greater than liver failure. So the threat of, of their body, you know, falling apart. So when you the, those people also need to forgive themselves for um or at least i think they should for doing shit that that um they that they knew was bad in a time when they just didn't know any better and they just didn't have a better method and a or a better way of going about protecting themselves from the pain that they felt forgive yourself the same way you tell a child uh, to forgive themselves for something because the inner child is what's pulling all the strings there. The inner child is pulling all the levers and, and is running the show. And if they're hurt, if that child is hurt, 
uh, which everybody's got a wounded inner child. It's just because if you live long enough, you'll have a wounded inner child. Because <clears throat> you can be big, you can be six feet tall and have pubic hair, and you got a wounded inner child. Like, <laughs> don't kid yourself. Like, everyone's got it. So, but that that is who is running the show inside you. And uh, the longer you ignore it and just like drown it out with booze or drugs or whatever or, or porn or whatever it is, whatever your thing is, food, you know, um, it's just going to get worse and worse. But uh, the first part, before you deal with all that, you have to forgive yourself for not knowing any better because you just didn't. You went with what you knew. You went with what you knew. And, um, and that's it. And it doesn't have to be drugs or something. Like if you have bad outbursts when you're angry or something, you like break shit and you scare your children. And, you know, in the moment when you're doing all that, you may or may not be aware of what you're doing. And then later you feel real bad about it. Instead of wallowing in self-hatred, which I'd like for you to stop doing, um, instead of wallowing in self-hatred, I, I would like to see you take a step back like mentally and emotionally try to remove yourself from the situation and just look at it from a third person point of view and ask yourself questions. Okay, why did I do that? Why did I why did I act a fool like that? Why was I doing that? Well, I was upset. Okay, so what was I upset about? Well, this, this, and this. Uh, okay, how did that make me feel? Well, I felt like I was unheard. I felt like I was being ignored. I felt like I was being intruded upon. I felt like I was being abandoned. I felt like, I, you know, whatever. Ask yourself questions about what the fuck happened to you get to know your feelings you know get to know your feelings uh well what's wrong with you i'm angry okay well why because so and so did this okay but what did that really do they crossed the boundary you felt violated you understand what i'm saying like there's other there's other emotions under the anger anger is a great emotion because it shows you what's important to you um but there, there's other stuff underneath that that you can get to know and therefore get to know yourself because those are other parts of yourself that are speaking up it's just it's just translating as anger that's how it comes out but there's other shit going on under there so um <clears throat> you can ask yourself those questions and and get to know yourself a bit and just come at yourself come to yourself and meet yourself in a in a non-judgmental ass way i've had a lot of friends and i've known a lot of people who were like in and out of prison and you know had done some some bad stuff I've known people who were in and out of prison for doing stuff they ha they had not <laughs> had not done I, kn I knew this guy who um, gave this woman a ride one time and the police had been watching her like physically from you know yards away and the police had been watching her and they kind of already knew who she was and he picked her up on on the side of the road to give her a ride you know because she called him to meet her, meet her out there, whatever. She didn't have a ride. Well, he didn't know it, but um, she had a um, bag of Coke or whatever in her purse, and she stashed it under the seat. So the police were watching her get in his truck, and they just pulled him over and got her out of there and searched her and searched her purse, and she didn't have any drugs on her. Well, they searched his car, and there were the damn drugs under her, under the passenger front seat. But because the drugs were in his vehicle, he fucking went to prison for 11 years. 11 damn years. And she had the nerve to show up and visit him in prison and ask him for money after that. I'm not making this up. He really told me this, and I believed him. He told me a lot, but he told me that. And I remember, that's one story I remember. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, forgot why I told him this. So, and, but anyway... <laughs> So I've been around, you know, all different kinds of people, and um, there are people that have really suffered, you know, when they when they uh, shouldn't have, and and were were innocent. <clears throat> but um, no matter what your story is, and no matter what happened, <clears throat> there are people that don't forgive themselves um, for things that were done to them when they were little. There's somebody I, I oh, there's somebody I'm thinking of who. I wish I could see him forgive himself for that because uh, no matter what he says, I'm, I'm convinced that he hasn't. <clears throat> he um, was uh, quite molested in his younger years and that never got addressed and nobody rescued him and um, he didn't get help. 
he never got any help for that. And <clears throat> I think that he has not forgiven himself for that, which is why he's eaten like he's eaten and why he lives the way he lives. Uh, it, it's because he's still ruminating over that. And I, I don't care what he says. Um, he hasn't forgiven himself. And I, I tried so hard to help him with that. And it just wasn't going to work because he's like above all that. He thinks he's got it all figured out and he doesn't. He doesn't have shit figured out. But I tried to help. I did. I tried so hard to help him. Like I, could. But I had so much. But I was realizing that I couldn't worry with him. I had to deal with my own shit. And that was the lesson there. So, I learned. <laughs> yeah, I learned. But <clears throat> I still saw what was going on with him. Um, and I just realized that, you know, that wasn't the situation for me to be in. And, and I got out of there. But, um, you know, you it's just, it's just time to forgive yourself for whatever it is. If you were violent, you know, if you... Uh, um, sold somebody's car, if you, if you killed somebody, if you were doing drugs and your children saw it, you know, you're doing it or whatever, whatever it is you've done, you know, that, that you're so hung up about. And instead of punishing yourself for something when you didn't know any better or you were just having a moment, you need to step away, like I say, look at it from a third person point, third person point of view and look at it as if you're a third person who doesn't know what's going on and is just asking questions and has a very we um um unbiased uh viewpoint like not judgmental do i have that right unbiased yeah non-judgmental not not emotionally involved you know not not involved just like very matter of fact like looking at it just looking at the facts look at it that way as best you can and if you need help with that get in touch with somebody who can help you with that like if you have a friend or somebody that that has a more merciful outlook on you than you have on yourself <laughs> and can kind of, you know, talk you through looking at something you've done with a more compassionate eye, I would say do that and, and, and cut yourself a break and, um, and see that, let yourself see that you, you did that or it happened, you know, for reasons that were, you know, it's sort of in your hands, but sort of not, if you were an adult, it was in your hands, but um, to forgive yourself for that. And then, so that's when, like one of the first big steps of inner work is, is forgiving yourself. So after that, what you would want to do, in my opinion, what I've done is once you forgive yourself and, and you really calm down about it, you know, just calm the fuck down, <clears throat> you give yourself permission to heal. And if you are overworking yourself um, not paying enough attention to yourself, neglecting yourself, giving up this, that, and the other, making sacrifices, blah, 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 you know, for everybody around you, not taking time for you, not getting enough rest, not doing what you want with your, with your life or whatever, because like you're living for everyone else. If you're doing all that, you're not giving yourself permission for shit and you need to stop and that needs to change. If you need to start small with like little things to give yourself permission for so you don't guilt trip yourself, you know, or like feel bad about every single thing you do for yourself, which you shouldn't. But if you need to start little, then start little. Eat something, prepare a meal for yourself that you enjoy. Eat your favorite food. Um, you know, you've been wanting a pet, go get yourself a pet and, or, you know, a dog or a cat or whatever and, and, and treat yourself and, and treat yourself to some love and um, companionship you know, take yourself out on a date, take yourself shopping just because we're, start wherever you need to start. You know where your level is. You know, you start where you need to, but give yourself permission to, to uh, enjoy things, you know, no matter how small they are. A bubble bath, you know, whatever. And um, After that, you know, once you get used to that and once you train your mind to, to see that it's okay to feel that way, it's okay to feel okay about what you're doing and it's okay to feel, to feel good and it's okay to get back in touch with yourself and, and do something for yourself and, you know, because you can't pour from an empty cup. I know everybody says that, but really, 
the gravity of that is is not un always understood <laughs> and um, you can give yourself permission to heal by letting yourself understand that you are like uh, as I say like the rest of us operating from an inner, inner uh, wounded child who is just trying to figure things out from a kid's point of view from a scared child's point of view and you can ask your inner child questions the inner child may or may not answer you know it may start crying it may you know go with your instinct and and just see what happens inside you when you when you do that if you ask the inner child questions and you start crying you know what just let it happen just let it happen if you need to wait until you're alone until you can get in the bedroom and lock the door or it's three in the morning and everyone's asleep and you're awake and you want to do it then then do it then you know you 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 can figure something out but um that has to be that step has to be taken because the wounded inner child is is calling the shots and if you're torturing yourself you know uh, that child is trying to say something probably you know, depending on what you're doing, like especially if you're overworking yourself, trying to take care of everybody else, um, whatever, whatever, that wounded child might might be saying, "Well, I have to make sure that everybody else is okay because I had to make sure that my parents were okay, and I had to take care of their emotions, and if if I do that, I'll I'll survive and I'll get love and I'll I'll live and I'll make it." You know, that in, that wounded child probably had to be the uh, parents emotional caretaker you know if the parents couldn't um, get their shit together and that left the child to kind of grow up too soon you know that kid is gonna be like okay I'm gonna take care of everybody you know but you, that ha you have to put that to bed you have to put that to rest at some point because you've got to start taking care of yourself that that inner child has no idea that the parents are you know a thing of the past and they're they're on their own they're 60 years old, whatever, they're on their own. They need to figure themselves out or it's whatever. But the wounded inner child living in a 30-year-old that is still trying to, like, bend over backwards for everybody else because that's just what you do, you know, that's not kosher. That's not going to work. Because what are you doing it for? Because the inner child's trying to do it for the parents. Well, hell, parents don't give shit. You know, if they were if they were cruel to you when you were 8 years old, I you know... Are, are they any better now? I don't know, but <laughs> I wouldn't keep operating on that because that's going to keep you in that cycle of just like nothingness. Just like that's like a bottomless pit. So giving yourself permission to heal is a big ass deal because you have to you have to show yourself some compassion so that you can be more open to learning about yourself. If you're hard on yourself and every time you make a mistake or every time you do something that's like for you, you know, makes you feel guilty because, you know, you're being selfish. It, as long as you're vi resonating on that frequency and, you're, and that's what you're vibing, you're not only going to draw in more of that, you know, because that's what you're matching, but you're, you're doing something that um, is being done for a different reason besides what's going on right now. And because the like I say the inner child is trying to t still take care of the parents whatever to, to get approval or affection or survival whatever and that's not relevant anymore it's not relevant anymore if you if you have your own home or you're at least going to work every day and and or maybe you've got your own money you know then you can survive you, you can take care of yourself and feed yourself and stuff like that so your parents aren't needed for that so therefore the inner child doesn't need to keep fucking worrying about that does that make sense so once you give your once you choose okay you know I'm going to give myself permission and and grace to heal and it's okay to work this out and and understand myself and be more open to myself and less judgmental to myself less judgmental to myself you open up all these doors within you that you didn't even know were there and you're going to understand so much more shit it takes time because you have to like hash it out but you, you can figure it out but showing yourself compassion because you do it because you do it for other people well what happened you can't do it for yourself well, why not what makes you different from the next human being what makes you so different you know, you think y'all have different problems or whatever. You might have different problems now, but you're, you're um, 
for all you know, you know, you, everybody in your life is vibing on the same shit, so you'll probably all have the same, you know, inner wounds. But if you are compassionate enough with other people, then it's time to do it for yourself. And you open up yourself, you're more open to yourself. And you're more open to learning about yourself. And that's the whole point of even living on this planet right now, is to learn about yourself. And the only way to do that is, is to give yourself a break and say, okay, what did I do? And why did I do that? Okay, it's because of this. That makes sense. If somebody else told me that, I would understand because it makes sense. And that's where you need to, that's where you need to be operating from if you're going to understand yourself better because being judgmental and being hard on yourself isn't going to get you anywhere. It's not going to get you anywhere. So, um, because that's not the right, that's not the right mindset. That's, that's a harsh, rigid mindset where there's no room for growth and it's all rules, 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 and that's not going to help you. So being open and opening yourself up to yourself. If you need help with this, I, I, um, designed a meditation way back where you, um, and I did a blog entry on this that was like really good to be honest with you. I'll probably go back and dig it up sometime because it was good, but it was called, um, unfold and um it was like a meditation where you close your eyes and you just go into your own darkness and you go into yourself and you just see how deep you can go and you get you see memories flying past you and you're like you can be wherever you want to be you want to be floating around the ocean you'll be floating around the universe you want to be floating around the woods whatever it feels like you on the inside um and you just explore, 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 and then you get down to the core, and, and that's what, however you want to see it, you know. But to to see all that's in there, inside you, and to practice being compassionate and being loving and kind and gentle to those parts of you on the inside, and saying, it's okay that you felt this way. That makes sense, because blah, 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 blah happened to you. Makes sense. And then move on. You know, and, and start little with that, and that will help you to have more compassion for yourself and to understand yourself better. And the more open you are to yourself, like I say, the more you'll learn. And the more you learn, the more you understand, and the more you understand, the more you can figure out and sort out and, and um, rectify, you know, <clears throat> and correct. And, and you can correct that shit, and you won't have the same um, patterns anymore because you know why you did them in the first place, and you figured it out, and you fixed it. So now it's like you have better priorities and a better mindset and a better viewpoint of yourself and therefore a better viewpoint of the world around you and the people around you and then you start attracting better people and it goes it goes up from there. Um, but giving yourself permission to heal is huge. That is a huge step. People don't realize how important that is. That, that gets skipped over a lot, I think. So that's just something I wanted to, to talk about. Um, and, uh, and I think that's it for now. I think I've said everything I want to say about that. But that is really important. And that is something that I've had to catch myself with and, and do for myself many, many times. And I still do. So I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Like this is, you know, part of my practices is <laughs> forgiving myself and, and giving myself a break and saying, okay, now why did I do that? And it's just, you just got to do it, you know. But the more you get used to that, the more you'll see the value in it. I promise. And, you know, if, if this didn't work, I wouldn't be telling you about it. So I want you to give yourself permission to heal and you start however small you need to start. No, no guilt trip in yourself. None of that shit. We're not, we're hanging that up. That's old news. Um, and that's it for now. So, uh, I hope that that was helpful and hope that brought you some clarity and some insight. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, y'all know where to find me. So thanks a lot. Bye.